Hey, good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? Good morning. Our little uh, plug the microphone in after you go live to get better audio. <laughs> so sorry. I was actually really impressed. Uh, Andrew, down. he's helping me out here this morning. He actually downloaded a level on his phone and he's trying to level the screen. That was pretty awesome, by the way. Uh, hi there, Chris Ferguson. Good to see you this morning. Glad you could uh, connect with us. There's Dave and Angie Brown. So nice to have you guys. Marty and Kathy. Uh, Marty and Kathy James. We so appreciate you being on every single week. There's Courtney James and Heather Keough. How you doing there, Heather? Heather is an early bird. She's one of those people that get up bright and early and do the whole exercise thing. I don't know. Anybody do that? Uh, I'm not quite uh, there yet. But uh, anyways, uh, there's uh, good to see everybody. There's Jennifer Dalrymple and Emily Howard. Uh, Abby, good to see Abby Nussbaum this morning. Lori Likens. Oh, wow. So nice to see you. Lori is a good friend of ours from Fremont. And that's nice. I get to see some of our friends from Fremont jumping on. Good to see you all this morning. I hope you guys are having a great week. Um, we missed you guys over the weekend. Uh, Christy and I had the opportunity to uh, go to Columbus and um, we were actually able to do some training for some young pastors and our denomination asked us to do that. And we were honored to do that. And after many years of ministry, it's nice to kind of be able to invest and give back a little bit. So that was a lot of fun. We spent the weekend in Columbus. Uh, yes, I'm not an Ohio State fan, but I do love Columbus. And uh, we had a nice time. We hung out by the Easton Mall and had a good time. We brought the kids with us. So uh, we had to you know, log in some times to go to the pool and, and all of that. Their pool was open at the hotel, which was pretty cool. Um, but because of uh, COVID, you have to schedule times in. And uh, so one of the teaching sessions, I said, all right, guys, I got to run. Um, we actually have uh, a date with a pool. <laughs> and so it was pretty fun. But we know you guys had an awesome weekend here. Um, I'm so blessed by our team. We have an incredible staff and team that, that run our services. I got a chance to watch the service online. It was incredible. The worship was amazing as usual. Pastor Andrew knocked it out of the park with his hashtag blessed message. How many of y'all enjoyed that and appreciated uh, Andrew? Man, I'll tell you, we got to have a wonderful team. God's doing some great things around here at the church, and we are so, so blessed. And uh, how many of you guys, real quick, are enjoying the hashtag Jesus series? How many of y'all enjoying this series? Isn't it, isn't it awesome? You know, for many of us, you know, we've read the life of Christ. We've read his words and his teachings. You know, for many of us, most of our, our lives are adult lives. But isn't it just great? I don't know, like sometimes when God anoints something, there's just such a blessing on it. I just feel like just God has anointed this season for our church. You know, in the midst of everything happening in our world to just get our eyes on Jesus. You know, just to, just to hear what he said to us to follow his example, to live like him, to love like him. And uh, that's been the, the great challenge for, for all of us. And I've been enjoying these messages. By the way, real quick, one more thing before I dive into my devotional this morning with you is how many of you were able to jump on last Friday at 1230 to check out our new pad podcast called The Break? Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked that. That was uh, such an awesome time. Uh, Pastor Brian, Pastor Zach, and Carter have started a Friday uh, podcast called The Break at 12.30, right over lunchtime. So if you get a lunch break, you can tune in. It was a lot of fun. It wasn't so much a devotional as it is just kind of a time to connect on like what's happening, what's happening in the church, getting to know our, our team a little bit more. They had some fun. I think they did three truths in a lie and you can win a t-shirt. So uh, Fridays are big study days for me. So I'm like, my, the, all our team knows I'm locked down on Fridays, but I took a little break and, and tuned into that and I had a few laughs and it, it was great. So if you've not checked that out, you may want to check that out. Really proud of those guys. Um, well, hey, uh, real quick, as we dive in today, um, there's something on my heart I want to share with you, uh, a new little mini series for the next couple weeks on these devotionals. And uh, kind of prefacing that, let me ask a question. How many of you, when you were kids, you enjoyed school? Uh, how many of you were just, I mean, man, you just love school. How many of you are like, school was okay. <laughs> how many of you were like, my kids, you know, depending on what I'm asking them, if they like food, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's this. 
But uh, I had the I, I got a I got a had a have a I had a little, little proud dad moment last night. Um, my son Brady, who's six, um, he is in kindergarten, and uh, I've been really proud of his ability to read. He's learning to read. And last night we sat together on the couch before he we went to bed, the whole family, and Brady read his first book to us front to back. And I have a proud dad moment clip. I want you to check this out. This is this is Brado. Uh, last night, giving us a little a little read here. Check it out. I just thought I had a, a little proud dad moment there uh, yesterday. It was just really, it was really, last night was really cute. But, uh, and I guess I enjoy watching my son read because it was funny. When I was in uh, grade school, I, I don't know if anybody can relate to that. I struggled a little bit learning to read. And I found out later, I'm ambidextrous. Is anybody ambidextrous? So you can use your right and your left. Um, it's funny because when I broke my leg in Fremont, um, I went to a physical therapist, uh, to rehab my leg who went to our church. He was an awesome guy. And I was, we were talking about being left and right. Cause he was ambidextrous, ambidextrous. And he said, did you have trouble learning how to read when you were a kid? And I said, yeah, he said, so did I. He said, I was reading that sometimes kids that, that use their right and their left can struggle. So anyways, I was just having a little proud dad moment there. And the reason why I said all that was, um, I don't know about you, but in, in school for me, probably my favorite, my, my favorite subject was math. Any math lovers out there? Uh, you loved math when you were a kid. Um, well, I want to talk to you for the next couple of weeks on something um, I'm simply calling spiritual addition. How many of you know we were meant to grow in our, rela- in our relationship with God? Um, throughout our walk with him, from the time we receive Christ to the time we go be with him, God has called you and I to grow. And I want to talk about spiritual addition, adding things. In fact, Peter, uh, I love Peter. I don't know about you. Can y'all relate to Peter? Uh, I love Peter. You know, he was not perfect, but man, God did a great work in him and through him. And I want to read for you today. It's going to kind of set the stage for our little mini series here the next couple of weeks. Uh, We're going to be reading out of the book of 2 Peter chapter uh, one, right at the top. I'm just going to read the first nine verses. You can follow along with me. I love what Peter says here. He says, uh, Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God And of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now look at these next couple of verses. But also for this very reason giving all diligence, notice this, add. So we're talking about adding things to our faith. So he says, give all your diligence to add what? To add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Notice what verse 8 says. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it ends by saying this, for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old 
sins. So a powerful section of scripture there about spiritual growth. You know, it, when we talk about the whole concept of spiritual growth, how many of you know when you're young, you always want to be older? <laughs> you know that? Uh, I don't know what that is about life, but when you're a kid, you always want to be older. And then once you get older, you always wish you were younger. In fact, um, this little boy was asked one time his age, and he, he answered, he said, I'm 12, going on 13, soon to be 14. <laughs> I kind of remember those days in my own life, you know, always wanting to be older and always wanting to grow. And what's interesting is in our relationship with God, you know, our relationship with God was meant to be a relationship that continues to grow. And what's interesting, and maybe you can remember back when you were a new believer. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but when I had devo <clears throat> devoted my life to Jesus, man, I was so hungry for God. I was so hungry for his word to pray to be in church. I mean, I would sit in my room for hours and read the Bible. I mean, praying was no problem. Getting to church was a passion. But how many of you know, as time goes by, it's easy to kind of lose that zeal to grow. You can kind of lose that fire. You can, you know, not let your living wrong. I mean, you love Jesus and you're going to church, but along the way, you lose that passion and that zeal to grow, that enthusiasm over time can, can fade. It's kind of like the old farmer that uh, used to always have this way of describing his uh, Christian experience. He used to say this, well, I'm, I'm not making much progress, but I'm well established. <laughs> it's funny when you see some believers, some people have been in church, you know, for many years, and that's kind of their mantra, you know. You know, I'm not making a lot of progress, but I am well established in the faith. This guy used to always say that as kind of kind of a cute story, but one day his uh, his wagon got stuck in the mud, and this guy that always got tired of hearing him say that uh, said this to him. He said, "Well, Mr. Jones, I see you're not making much progress, but you must be content because you're well established." <laughs> and I thought that was kind of funny, but you know, for for many people, that is their spiritual experience. They're just kind of stuck. You know, maybe they, they grew like crazy when they were young, on fire for God, but then over time that enthusiasm faded and many people kind of get stuck in their relationship with God. But as Peter's writing this, he's encouraging you and I, no matter how long you've been serving God, no matter how many wonderful experiences with God you've had, no matter how much you know the Bible, no matter how much God has used you in your life, let me tell you something. God wants you to continue to grow. There is more. And that being said, so what did, what did Peter say? He said, listen, um, you want to work to add these seven qualities to your life. And so he, he focuses on these seven areas. And what's neat is, you know, when you look at Peter's life, you know, we know that Peter had some, some lacks in his life early on. But you can see this man who's older now and who's matured and he's grown in these areas. And listen to these these seven areas that God wants us to grow in. He says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, number seven is love. And he says, if you continue to grow in these areas, you will not be unfruitful in your walk with God. And so what I want to do over the next couple of weeks is look practically at these seven areas and how you and I can grow in them so that we can be the fruitful believers that God has called us to be. So let me give you a, a quick three things here real quick uh, before we wrap up and, and pray today. And that is before we uh, do our part in growing, Peter encourages us that God has already done his part. I love that. Verse three says, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue. Isn't that awesome? That God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That means anything you and I need to live in this earthly life, to live for God, God has given us those things. And what has God given us the most? God has given us his grace. How many of you know God's grace is sufficient? His power is made perfect in your weakness and mine. No matter what we face in this life, no matter what we go through, God's grace, his divine power is more than enough for any challenge, any character deficiency that you have, any mountain in your way. Aren't you glad for that this morning? Like, No matter what you face today, 
the grace of God has already, Jesus has already supplied everything you're going to need for this day. It's, it's an awesome thought to, to think about that. The Bible said he's also given us these great promises by which we have been given, has been given to us exceedingly and great and precious promises that through these, you may be partakers of the divine nature. So think about all the promises God's given us in scripture. He's given us promise of for, promises of forgiveness. He's given us promises that he would be with us in difficult times, that his Holy Spirit would comfort us, that he would bring healing when we need healing, that he would bring eternity, bring us into heaven someday when we die. He's given us all these incredible promises. So the first thing is this, if you and I want to grow spiritually, you need to know, number one, Jesus already provided everything we need in order to grow. In fact, the second thing I want to say is just simply this, that God's great love, his grace, his promises should be the motivating factor behind why we want to grow. Notice what he says in verse five. He says, but also for this very reason, why should you want to grow? Why should I want to grow? Because Jesus died because he gave us all this stuff. You know, I've been, I've been doing this a long time and, you know, sometimes, you know, I see people that, that want to grow spiritually because other people will admire them if they do, you know, they'll get praise from man. You know, other people think, well, if I grow, I'm going to get more blessings from God. And, and while people might look up to you when you grow and, and yes, when you live a godly life, God will bless you. But really ultimately the, the motivation behind growing is just out of deep appreciation. Like God, you came and died and gave your life for me. And because of that, I want to grow. I want to know you more. I want to become more like you. I want the world to see you, Jesus, in me. I want to do what you've called me to do. I want to stand before you, Jesus, someday and have you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So that should be our motivation to grow. So Jesus did all the work and our appreciation for his sacrifice should make us want to grow. And then here's the last thing. To engage in spiritual growth or spiritual addition, it requires diligence on our part. Don't miss this part. Verse 5 says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence add to your faith. You see, there's God's part and then there's our part. You know, sometimes people are like, well, God did all the work, so I'm just going to coast. No. And, uh, you know, other people are like, I have to do it all on my own. No, it's a wonderful balance. Jesus did the work and gave us his power and his grace. Now it's up to us with that power and grace to partner with God in our own spiritual growth, reading the Bible, praying, listening to the Holy Spirit, letting God shape us into the people that he's called us to be. Because how many of you know, success in any area, it requires diligence, doesn't it? I mean, anytime you want to succeed in any area, whether that's in education, in your, your, your career, uh, in, he- in your health, becoming a healthy person, uh, managing your finances, and uh, really anything, sports. Uh, I love what Benjamin Franklin said. He said, diligence is the mother of good luck. A lot of times you look at people and you say, well, God loves them more, or they're just lucky. No, chances are they're doing some things behind the scenes that no one else really can actually see. In fact, how many football fans do we have out there today? Um, how many of y'all enjoyed the Super Bowl uh, this past weekend? Uh, maybe your team won, maybe they didn't, maybe you were a little indifferent. I was a slightly indifferent about this last Super Bowl. But one of the things you know, I enjoyed were the commercials. And uh, one of the things that I enjoyed in the commercials is they brought back um, this hologram of the great Vince Lombardi. And uh, he was a legendary coach. In fact, this past weekend when I was talking to some pastors, I was encouraging them with some quotes from Vince Lombardi. And I like what he said. He says, there's only one way to succeed in anything, and that is to give it everything. Isn't that good? There's only one way to succeed at anything, and that's to give it everything. If you want to succeed in any area of your life, you have to be willing to give it your very best. In fact, when we look at those two quarterbacks in the Super Bowl, they're both amazing. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, you know, he's, I think he'll be the next Tom Brady, uh, an incredible young man. And then you look at Tom Brady and here's this guy like in his forties, you know, and he's still winning Super Bowls. You know, yes, he's been gifted with natural talent. And uh, yes, he played for the Michigan Wolverines. I'm just, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I'm just, I'm just saying, (laughs) but anyways, um, he is extremely disciplined. You know, he goes to bed at nine o'clock. Um, every single night. He's a vegetarian. He has a chef that cooks for him. He, he, he lives an extremely disciplined life. 
In order for him to play at his level, at his age, he has to do the hard work to make that happen. And, uh, you know, and so whether you like him or lump him, um, you know, you have to admire his diligence to be able to perform at his level, at his age. But, <clears throat> but that being said, that should be our heart. You know, I want to grow in God. I want to become more like him. I want to pray. I want to read my Bible. I want to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Like, I want to add these seven things to my spiritual life. And so here's a beautiful thing. The Bible says, if we'll diligently do this, these things, that we will be fruitful. Let me read the last two verses and we'll pray. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness <clears throat> and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. So the Bible says, listen, if, if, if I will continue to work to add these seven things, to cooperate with God, then I will continue to be fruitful in my relationship with God. So it's a divine partnership. I'll, I'll close by saying this. Uh, how many of you know college is expensive? For those of you that have kids in college, you know that it's expensive or had kids in college. And uh, one of the things that Christy and I did, you know, speaking of financial discipline, when our kids were born, uh, you know, we, we, you know, being pastors, we don't know that we're going to be able to pay for all their college. But what we decided we would do is when they were first born, we opened up 529 plans, saving college saving plans. And we put just a little bit of money in there every month with the hope that over time, you know, we'll give them a huge leg up uh, in their college and, and whatever that is. I don't know what it's going to cost at that point. But I heard somebody talk about, you know, your education in college and what Jesus did for us. What Jesus did for us is like paying our tuition. So let's say that, that God blesses us and we're able to pay the tuition of Brady and Ashton to go to college. Yes, we paid their tuition, but they still have to do the hard work of studying and growing and getting that degree. And so it's a beautiful combination. And that's how it is for us. Jesus Christ did the work. He paid the, the tuition for us. Now it's our job to continue to grow. And I hope that you'll do that. As, as your pastor, that's my heart for you, that you will continue to grow. Don't, don't get comfortable in your walk with God. Know him more. Man, become more like him. Do what he's called you to do. You will never regret that. Let me pray for you as you get ready to start your day. Lord, I thank you, God, for this time together this morning. And I thank you for, for each and every person that's tuned in this morning. And I just say a prayer for all of us today. Help us not to get content in our walk with you. Lord, help us to continue to grow. Because you loved us so much, you gave your very best. Help us to give our best back to you to know you more, that the world will see you in us in the way we live, and that we will accomplish your will for our lives. In Jesus' name, and amen. Well, uh, it was good being back with you guys. I look forward to being back with you this weekend, whether in person or online. We love you. Have a blessed day. We'll see you real soon.